Hello, my name is Tino van der Kraan. I am a game developer at Sassabot Studio, and you are watching a tutorial about preparing textures for the standard shader in Unity 5 using Endo 2 and Photoshop. With Unity 5, we are now able to do physically based rendering. This video will not go into the specifics as there is a lot of information out there that covers the theory of physically based rendering, how it works and why it is important. For now it suffices to know that it allows artists to create pretty and predictable results in rendering. I found it difficult to find a simple example of how to approach creating these textures. So that is what I will show you in this video. Remember, what I'm showing you is simply a method that I like using and I'm always open to learn about better ways to do things. Let's get started. Because this is not a tutorial about creating tileable textures, I'm going to cgtextures.com to grab a texture from there. Once you have found a texture of your liking, it is time to drop it into Photoshop. The easiest method I have found creating texture maps for physically based renderer is using Quixel's Endo 2 software. It does all the heavy lifting while still providing you with some control over the output. In this tutorial we are going to be preparing a diffuse, normal, specular, gloss, occlusion and height map to be used in Unity. In physically based rendering the diffuse channel of the shader is also known as the albedo. It basically contains the natural color of a material unaffected by any lights or occlusion. For this tutorial, this image is good enough. Endo 2 comes with a number of presets that will make it easy to create a normal map for certain types of materials. Sometimes, trying a different preset can yield the result that you are after. For now, we are going with the Stonewall preset. A normal map basically contains depth information and can give the illusion of depth in a flat surface. Endo 2 will also use it to generate the other maps that we need. Now that Endo 2 is done setting up our normal map, we can have some fun pushing sliders and see what kind of effect it has on the preview. The sliders typically control the fine and broad details in this map. Keep on tweaking until you are satisfied. Use the left mouse button to move the preview sphere around, the middle mouse button to rotate, the scroll wheel to zoom, and right mouse button to affect the position of the lights on the preview. There are more preview options available if you right click on the preview sphere. Once you are happy with the result, you can collapse the texture and save it in a layer. The hotkeys I use to speed up this process are Ctrl Shift E to merge the layers, Ctrl A to select everything, Ctrl C to copy selection, and Ctrl V to paste selection. I also double click on my background layer in order to name it. Now we go back to the normal map we just merged and undo this action. Until we will see the layer hierarchy of Endo 2. With the correct layer selected, we can convert this normal map into a specular map. The specular map is what determines the intensity of the material's reflectivity. In traditional rendering, this was often shown as a highlight, bouncing from the direction of a light in the scene. With physically based rendering, we can get much more visual fidelity out of this map. As with the normal map, keep pushing those sliders until you are satisfied. We also merge this map and paste it as a layer with the other texture maps. When that is done and named, we go back to the file that contains the normal map and use it to generate an occlusion map. An occlusion map will make tight spaces seem darker and give your texture a bit more depth. Additionally, it will allow Unity to lessen the reflection effect in these darker corners of your map.
And again, when you are done you can add it as a layer with the other maps, so we can move on to creating a height map. The height map will be used within Unity as a parallax map, and basically simulates the displacement of the texture using the normal map. Generally the sliders in the bottom will create more smooth and pleasing results. The fine height sliders in the top can quickly show up as spikes in your map. After you have also saved and named the height map, we can move on to the last map, which is the gloss map. The gloss map will determine how rough or smooth the reflection of your material will appear. A mirror has high values, creating a smooth result, whereas rubber or coal has low values, making it look very rough. In this case, I simply apply a curve adjustment on a copy of the specular to create my gloss map. Typically, you can add noisy textures in this map to create interesting variations in glossiness. Once I'm happy, I make a duplicate of my copy and curves with Ctrl J and merge them with Ctrl Shift E and rename it properly. Now I will have to copy the content of the gloss result and paste it into the alpha channel when exporting the specular map. We have all the maps we need and are ready to export. Photoshop has a nice feature that lets you export selected layers. The downside is that it insists on adding numbers to the export, but that can easily be fixed with a free tool called Bulk Rename. I prefer saving out as TGA and will save the texture maps into a new Unity project. We can leave the depth at 24 bit, but we'll have to export the specular map again at 32 bit in order to include the alpha channel that contains the gloss map. This is where I use Bulk Rename, a very powerful and fast bulk renaming tool. We will export the specular map once more at 32 bit for its alpha channel and override the previously exported specular map. we start with an empty project and a default scene. When our content is sorted we can create some objects to apply our work to. We are going to need a new material that is using Unity standard shader. A new material should be set to the standard shader by default. Next we are going to need some geometry to apply our material to, so I will make a plane and a sphere. To apply the material we can simply drag it from the project tab into the scene view on the object that we want the material to be applied to. With the material selected we can start inserting our texture maps and see how they affect the surface of the geometry. This is also where you can set the tiling of the material. Notice the increase in reflectivity due to the specular and gloss map. When applying your normal map you will need to fix the map by pressing the prompted fix now button. The height map had a very subtle result, but this can be tweaked later with the height slider. The occlusion map is rather pronounced in how it darkens the cracks and crevices. It also prevents these areas from reflecting too much. That concludes this tutorial making texture maps for Unity Standard Shader. I hope you learned something from this video and thank you for watching. If you like you can follow me on Twitter and ask me anything. I would also appreciate it if you could stalk Sessibot Studio on social media channels such as Twitter, Facebook and YouTube. 
I hope to see you again soon with more tips, tricks and tutorials on game development. Until then, and have a great day. Thank you.